Hey, what's up everyone? Greg here. Now, iOS 12 has been heavily demoed at WWDC, especially on the iPhone, but what I noticed when I was watching the conference is that the iPad actually didn't get much love uh, for the demos. It was a lot of the iPhone 10 being demoed, but iOS 12 is coming to the iPad as well, so I kind of wanted to do iOS 12 on the iPad first before we kind of dug into the iPhone. I thought that'd be a little more interesting considering I don't really know what's going on on the side of the iPad. So one of the first changes you're gonna notice to iOS 12 on the iPad is that it has borrowed all of the iPhone 10's gestures. So you can actually look over here. You actually don't even need to press the home button to go home anymore. You can just swipe up like on the iPhone 10. Now, if you have a touch ID, you can put touch ID in. There's no face ID, so it doesn't automatically unlock. So you can see that it borrows the iPhone's 10 gesture to swipe up. So you can swipe up and you go home. Uh, it's actually a little confusing because you can actually bring up the dock here, but if you keep swiping up, you'll actually go home. And it doesn't matter that the iPad still has the button here. So you can press the button to go home. You can swipe up to go home. So this is clearly pointing in a direction where a new iPad will come out and it will be getting rid of the home button and it will be borrowing those iPhone gestures. Now with those iPhone gestures, you can also swipe from the right over here to bring up Control Center. So they're sticking with that interaction for bringing up control center by swiping the top right of the screen. You'll notice also that the time and date are in the top left corner like on the iPhone and that the battery life, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the location settings are all in the top right over here, which is very interesting considering that the iPhone 10 does this because it has a notch. So maybe a future iPad Pro is actually going to have a notch on it. I actually thought against this, I didn't think they would bring the notch to the iPad Pro lines, but this software is kind of making it seem like maybe there will be a notch for the iPad Pro. So because the iPad is borrowing from the iPhone X's gestures, you can now actually swipe from the top left of the screen to get to your notifications. So iOS 12 also has grouped notifications as one of the new features. So you can see I have a bunch of group notifications here. And if I go in and press into them, you can actually see that I have a bunch of notifications lined up. I can clear them all, I can show less. And it's just a nice new way to organize notifications. So it's just a nice grouping mechanism to group all of your notifications together. So another big change on iOS 12 for the iPad is that if you go swipe up, you can actually see that you can get to your multitasking this way too. So it's not just that you double press the button anymore. Again, they're going to be getting rid of this button in a future iPad release. So they kind of have that same gesture as for the iPhone 10. You can also swipe apps away. So if you want to close an app, you just swipe up on it now and that'll actually close the app for you. So some of the old gestures for the iPad, like the five finger close, still can close an application, but it can also bring you to the multitasking window if you do it slowly. So let me try that again. So there you can see that it brings you to the multitasking window by doing that gesture. But you know, just to sum it up, it's very much borrowing from the iPhone X's gestures. So we can definitely expect to see a newly released iPad without a home button. Uh, all the gestures are kind of pointing to that. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new applications that are on the iPad. So you can see that we have a newly redesigned stocks app. This is very exciting, very exciting indeed. So if you go to continue this, you can actually see that the stocks app is here. Uh, Apple stocks doing pretty well. You get news on the side over here. So a little bit of integration with Apple news and on the left, you get all your stocks and stuff like that. So stocks for the iPad, probably an app most people aren't using, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a nice little update and you get a lot of business news on the right. So if you're really into investing and stuff, you have all your news here and you have a report on about how all your stocks are doing. Another redesigned app is voice memos. So you now you get voice memos, just a pretty simple thing. You can hit record over here and you can just start recording your voice memo. Just a little change on the iPads on iOS 12. So another redesigned apps is now the new Apple bookstore renamed from iBooks. So you can actually just go into the bookstore. You can see it has this nice new design that's very reminiscent of the iOS app store and the new Mac app store. So you kind of have a for you section, a library, uh, things that are trending, recommended books. It looks very, very nice. As you can see, you can go ahead and maybe go ahead and click on this and get a sample and you can kind of see it has this really nice design a very nice redesigned book application that'll actually make you want to use it a little more. It's a very nice redesign. You can kind of see a lot of stuff about it. You can read about the book. 
you can see when it was released, the length of it, the publisher, you got reviews, and then you can get more books, recommended books. A nice redesign to go with the iOS 11 aesthetic that is now only more prominent in iOS 12. So Photos on iOS 12 got a nice little upgrade too, and they added a nice For You section like a lot of the new applications have. And you can kind of see the memories you have, and then easier ways to share with your family and friends different photo albums and different edits to do. Just an overall easier process and a nicer way to look at your photos in the Photos application. So in iOS 12, Apple also added the ability to take a look at your stats and see how long you've been using your device and just how much you've been picking up, like your iPad or your iPhone. So you can kind of see if you need to take some breaks, maybe you wanna put some limits on yourself. So this is a new feature in iOS 12 where you can kind of see that today I used the iPad for 43 minutes. It's 24 minutes above average, according to this, which I don't know if it's borrowing from older stats or if it's just taking the stats from today. Uh, it says I did 14 total pickups today, seven per hour. So obviously I think it's skewed a lot towards now because I'm testing it, but you can kind of see that where I'm spending a lot of my time, a lot of my time's on Twitter and reading and in the photos application. And you can kind of just see all the different stats for when you're using your iPad or your iPhone. It's a feature that's probably going to be used a lot for kids and stuff who have iPads and you can kind of set your limits and stuff there. But if you think you suffer from like a tech addiction, you want to put some limits on yourself. This is a very useful thing. So you can actually get raw data on how you're using your device. So with iOS 12, Apple is leading heavily into augmented reality and they actually made a measuring app on the iPad for this occasion. So you can actually go ahead and take this measuring app and you can actually hit this plus over here and it's actually going to take a measurement and you can go up over here and you can actually get the length. You can also set points so you can hit the plus again and then say you want to add another point or you just go to the left over here and you add another point and you put it up here and you could just kind of connect the dots, get different lengths and widths and see just how much you want to measure stuff. It's actually pretty cool and you can go ahead and measure stuff and see the exact dimensions of something and you don't need a ruler. This is kind of the stuff that makes augmented reality really useful and I'm really happy to see Apple make their own augmented reality measuring app. Uh, it's really cool so far. I'd have to test how accurate it is with a ruler or something but yeah it's it's really kind of cool that you can just measure something out and all the points stay there and you have a reference. Uh, you can clear it out and do other stuff. But yeah, really cool augmented reality application on the iPad. So with iOS 12, Siri also gets a little smarter and includes some more translations for different language. Like now she can translate into Japanese. Translate into Japanese. Subscribe to Greg's Gadgets. Siri also gets a new feature in iOS 12, which is called Shortcuts. Now, there is a dedicated application to make shortcuts, but it isn't available on any of the betas just yet. However, if you go into the settings for Siri and search, you'll actually find that you can do some of the shortcuts here, but they are very limited. So say you want to do a shortcut, you can go into more shortcuts. And then you can see that you can actually have a few of the shortcuts. Let's go for the stock one. And you can actually record a custom shortcut from the settings. So let's go ahead and do that. Show stocks. Close enough. Siri misheard me, but let's go ahead and try that out. Show Starbucks. Okay, and the custom command worked even though Siri misheard me, but you can kind of see that you can use a custom command and it'll take you to something like that. Now, what Apple demoed on stage was a little more complex. You could do multiple sets of commands and it would kind of chain together. So say you wanted to tell Siri that you're driving to someone's house, it would pull up the map directions for them and also play your favorite music and turn off the lights on your house. So very, very customizable actions for Siri but unfortunately that app isn't available yet on the iOS 12 beta. iOS 12 also has a slightly revamped news application as you can see right here. It's a little bit redesigned from iOS 11. You can kind of scroll through the stories and then you also have a sidebar over here where you kind of have the things you're subscribed to, the things you're interested in. Uh, just a cool little update for news, nothing major, but a nice little redesign makes it look a lot nicer for your news content.
So as far as changes go for the iPad, those are the only ones I seem to be able to find at this moment. There are a bunch of other small little changes that they've done to the iPad and to iOS 12 in general, but overall it's about the same experience on iOS 11 with just a few slight changes. There's no real big changes to the multitasking system. Okay everyone, and that just about does it for this video. A overview of iOS 12 on the iPad Pro, some of the new gestures and some of the new designs of applications and new features that you'll be getting on iOS 12 on the iPad. I just didn't think in that conference, I didn't really cover it that well. So these are all of the new features and new gestures I noticed. I'm sure there's a few I'm missing, some few slight changes in the overall operating system, but those are the features I got to. I think I covered most of the major features of iOS 12 on the iPad Pro. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to my channel to see more. I'm gonna have a bunch of new content coming out for WWDC this week. Also, let me know what you think of iOS 12 in the comments below and some of the features you're most excited for, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.